Using Blockbench on your phone or tablet device is as simple as follows. You open up your web browser and you head to blockbench.net. When you reach the site, you're presented with this page. Here you can choose to go to downloads or open web app. You can choose to install Blockbench as an actual application on your device so I can open it up from the starting screen. And so I set out to create my first Blockbench model on my phone ever. And it was a very interesting, fun procedure to do so. I say fun now, but that will definitely have changed across the workflow span. Why? Well, initially it felt quite intuitive. I figured out where the menus were. As you can see here, the rigging procedure is quite straightforward. And I was more or less just making a simple leg in this case. I thought to myself, the simpler I keep it, the more I can explore. And then I also started animating it. But here's where all of the issues that I come across became apparent. Now, there is an awful lot of menuing, but the biggest issue is actually that I had to go in and manually change the snap setting to a smaller increment. This sure helped me out, but it also felt... I, I just got used to do it with my shift and control keys. So, here I decided to just leg it and move on to actually building my full model. Now, I decided to try to keep the model quite simple, but I wanted to be able to rig it and animate it texture it and present a full-blown little model when everything was said and done that I could then convert over and send to my computer. But did I enjoy this process? Uh, that's a slightly different question actually. I do... I wouldn't like to say that it was amazing to work on the phone and the further I went into the process the more tedious it became and the more I really felt like the lack of control that you don't get presented with on the web app or the Android device using the web app was very apparent. Every step of the way felt a bit like a hurdle where I was punishing myself more than I was giving myself the opportunity to really push forward and create something cool. I believe, for me, the biggest drawback was the menuing. Having to go back and forth between different menus to access different tools and commands, and also not having access to all of the ones that I wish was on screen at all times, like on my computer. But when we flip the coin and take a look at texturing, this is where I would consider using a tablet or a phone device with a web app really shines. Why? Well, the entire procedure of drawing on the screen exactly where the thing is supposed to be located, like you would do with a big, like, expensive kind of Cintiq tablet or something like that, this just felt really intuitive, it was nice, it was quick and fast, probably the fastest portion of the procedure in comparison to my normal workflow, and I really enjoy this. But the moment I started putting down the final textures, it became apparent that the next step was probably going to be quite a difficult task to do. It was fairly straightforward to flip and switch all of that. I did notice that the naming conventions didn't change like they would do on the usual desktop app. But all in all, animating the first leg, pretty straightforward, simple procedure. I didn't feel any issues whatsoever doing this. It was nice. But then suddenly, <laughs> I realized as I was about to flip the animation that this is not intuitive enough. I can understand why people who use the web application on a phone or a tablet device find it very lackluster. Because this is just a very time-consuming procedure and prove me wrong if I'm wrong, but there wasn't really a way to work around the systems of copying and implementing every single keyframe one by one and try to match them up. I wish there was a way to just select everything on one bone or select everything that goes down one keyframe segment. That would have been nice, uh, in the timeline that is. But uh, no, that wasn't there and I found myself frustrated. This took a lot of time and would I want to do it again? Probably not. Will I do it again? Probably likely. Um, just to prove a point, I believe, uh, if nothing else. But then again, it was really fun just looking at the results. I think this guy turned out all nice. I'd prefer to animate him on the computer, but just using the phone like this, this is proof that you can do some really nice stuff. So after some tinkering, I decided to bring my model over to the PC because of course this is where I do all my thumbnails and stuff. But regardless, the problem that I had and the problem I do believe many of you will have and face already have faced as well is that for some reason, when you save your files in Blockbench on an Android device, for example, it decides to rename the file into txt at the ending. Now it's as simple as just taking that away and the file should be able to open, no problems with that. But the fact that it does that makes it so that you'll have to go in through another software and try to rename the files and change the file type, even though that should not be a thing. Then secondly, I also noticed that it took me a far lot longer to work with the models on my phone device. Now, I should mention that when I do textures normally, I use my mouse 
and not a stylus pen or any type of drawing tablet for that. I could, and I definitely feel like should do more of that in the future. Well, painting with the stylus felt very intuitive. And I do believe for that reason alone, I'd rather use an actual stylus for doing textures. Everything else is very clunky, chunky. There's a lot of going back and forth between menus to take so much more time on the phone. And it's a lot more sensitive. And of course, you can't use the keyboard at the same time. You don't have the mouse input. There's a lot of modifiers like shifting, alting, using short commands that the phone device simply does not allow you to do. And even though I really like how texturing was to do on my phone, there is definitely a room for getting models done with very high detail quality if you just have the patience to do so. One thing that I found, for example, is if I go into File Preferences Settings and I scroll all the way down to Snapping, if I were to set grid snapping to a very much lower resolution here, let's say 32 or 64 even, or maybe 128, it would allow me to do a lot more with the model. Now, animations is where I do believe that there is some really good features and some really big drawbacks. Cause all in all, I'll have to say, working with a stylus on my phone felt really intuitive. And I do believe if you want to animate snakes and similar creatures using your tablet or a phone, that's gonna go really well for you. The problem is when you want to start working on things with legs and mirroring. And the biggest problem and drawback that you might have noticed as I was working on the model is you can't select all keyframes of a single bone at the same time, or even at multiple bones. You'll have to select every individual keyframe one by one. Right click, copy, and then find a new place for it, putting the timeline there, and then paste it in. And you'd have to do this for every individual bone, for every individual keyframe on those bones. That was a big hurdle and something that I really, really despised a lot as I was working. However, it did turn out quite nicely. As we saw, this guy does animate. I could probably bring him into Model Engine or something like that. It's quite a simplistic animation. You see the head bobbing back and forth there. The arms are just going up and down. I haven't added any extra movement to the arms because I kind of just didn't feel like it. It took me literally 20 times as long to work on this little guy with this simple texture, a 16 by 16 texture as in comparison to if I were to do it on my computer. And that is a big thing and a big drawback, but also nice to know, because if you just wanna have a relaxed session of block bench, try it out, do it in your own pace, maybe just rest down in a big lean chair and have a, a good coffee or whatever, then I do believe that that's exactly what you should do. Approach block bench as this little drawing situation where you, you make a simple model and you work on a texture a bit, because working, as I said, with the stylus was really nice. I really enjoy that. But all in all, I'm probably gonna stick with using my PC for Blockbench. But now, surprise me, show what you make in Blockbench. Send me pictures over to Twitter or head over to our Discord server and share stuff in our models chats just to see what you can do with your phone. Cause I do believe that there are some really great creators out there that pushes super hard and just wants to bring out the best having limited hardware equipment. And I have all the respect in the world for what you do and who you are. Keep going with all of your projects using your phone devices, your tablet devices, because in my eyes, you are big heroes pushing through using what I would consider myself to be a big hurdle. But it's cool that it exists and it was actually quite fun to work with. Like, I don't think I will never touch it again, but probably not in a professional manner. Yeah, I have been Kevin. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do that. And I will see you around here on the channel in another video in the near future. Thank you and have a great day.